Thank you. Uh, back a couple of hundred years ago, we had some people in this uh, country that didn't uh, particularly uh, like the way their government was functioning. And uh, they decided they wouldn't pay any more taxes, and they wouldn't uh, follow the government's uh, commandments, you might say. And, of course, this was old King George III over there in England. He was the head of the government of, a, of that day. And we had 13 colonies at that time in this country. And those people, they were strong individuals. They recognized that government had become too powerful, that government was trying to uh, plunder their wealth, and they decided that they didn't like having their wealth plundered. They didn't like having to pay uh, too much of their uh, income, their production, going to taxes. And, of course, they called them patriots back then, and King George III, he called them tax protesters. <laughs> well, here we are, a little over 200 years later, and we have a government in this country, and they are calling people like me tax protesters. And somehow or other, I don't mind that at all. I wear that badge, uh, that label I wear it as a badge of honor, because it puts me up in a class where I really don't feel like I belong, uh, but it just kind of makes me feel like I'm rubbing shoulders with fellows like Thomas Jefferson, uh, James Madison, uh, the Adams uh, fellows up there in the Boston area, Patrick Henry, and those kind of people because King George called them tax protesters. And so here we are. We have a government today that is calling people like myself a tax protester. And so I wear that label with a great deal of pride because I think it puts me in a pretty good class of people. I sure don't want to be put into the class of people that are out here bowing down to all of the edicts that are being handed down by our national, our state, our county, and our city governments. I think it's time that we have a stirring in this country, and we are having that stirring at this very moment in this country. The founders, when they created the Declaration of Independence, they made a statement there that is fitting for today. They said, all experience hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they have become accustomed. Back when I became very active in this movement in this country, there weren't too many people out there that felt that they had suffered enough. I was rather lonesome. But today, I'm not lonesome anymore because I find that there are a lot of my countrymen out there who have come to the point where they have suffered enough and they want to make some changes. And it is happening all over this nation. Now, back about 10 years ago, I wrote a book that I put a title on it, and I called it the, or Do Unto the IRS as They Would Do Unto You. And inside the front cover, I put this comment. I said this, everyone should pay their fair share of taxes. A nation that allows its tax consumers to decide what is a fair share will destroy productivity, then destroy itself. We have trusted government too much in this country. We have trusted our public servants to determine what is a fair share. And we find that now the public servants say that over 50% of what we produce is a fair share. Now, a little over 200 years ago, when we had the tax protesters there that uh, caused the, or brought about the War of Independence and the independence of this great nation, when that happened, King George III was taxing the people at a rate of 14%. And the people rebelled and said, no, we will not tolerate that rate of taxation. 
Today it is over 50% in this country, and I believe that it is time that we react and react very positively. Now, there are two ways that you can react in a situation such as this. You can react with violence, the, the guns and the bombs and all of this, and the blood and the gore that goes with a war of independence. You can go that route. But as I have said many times across this nation, and you'll find it in my books, I say that a bloody revolution is a sign of failure. It is a sign of failure on the part of government. It's a sign on the fa of failure on the part of the people. Because we in this country at this point in time have access to a solution that is orderly, that is proper, that is legal, it is lawful, and it is a solution that is right at our fingertips. It is there and it is a solution that was given to us, put into our form of government so that we could have access to it at a time like we have in this nation right now. The government of the United States today, the federal government in Washington, D.C., has become a monster. And that's what this critter right here is all about. Our state governments have become monsters. They are out here determining what is a fair share. They are putting rules and regulations and acts and laws and statutes on our backs at a rate that we just cannot tolerate anymore. That problem has come right on down to our county level. That problem has come right down to our city level. And so I have this visual aid here, and this represents government in this country at all levels. We the people were supposed to be up here above our government. We were to have government that would serve rather than master the people. It, it was to be a government of, by, and for the people. But today, the government is free, and we the people are servants. We are serfs. We are out here controlled rather than controlling government. Now, as I have said many, many times, there are only two kinds of government, just two. The, so, the political scientists, they tell us, oh, there's socialism and there's Nazism and fascism and monarchies and democracies and republics and all of that. But just forget all of that garbage, all of that complexity that they love to build into this system to confuse people. There are only two kinds of government. You have people in control of government or you have government in control of people. You either have the people down here underneath government, or you are going to have people up here above government. We were given a system back there 200 years ago when the Constitution for the United States of America was ratified. We were given a system whereby we the people were up here. Over the years, we have allowed, allowed this monster to lower our status, put us down here, and of course when we're down here, we're not free. But the government is free. This monster is free out here. All across this nation, however, at this point, you will find that people are saying, hey, the monster is out of control, we have to bring it back, and in we state after state after state, we now have initiative process going on and people are saying they're signing petitions and they're saying we will not let our legislature legislators put another tax on us without our consent at the ballot box this is a move in the right direction however this does not cure the problem that we have at the national level so we have to put our finger on the solution of how we control the government at the national level. I am absolutely confident that if we can control the government at the national level, we will be able to control it at the state, the county, and the city level without any problem. 